Welcome back to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces today. As you can probably tell, my voice is a little scratchy today. That's because I'm coming over a sinus infection and laryngitis. So bear with me today as my voice might crack and squeak a little bit. For today's video, I'm going to use this color wheel that I made last week. I'm going to pick a color and use different values of that color to paint some pictures of three-dimensional objects. It's real easy to do, and here are the supplies you're gonna need. Paper towel and a cup of water. A palette with any color of paint, plus a little bit of black and a significant amount of white. A pencil and a brush. The paints that I'm using here are Golden Brand Fluid Acrylics, and the color I'm using is Primary Magenta. But in my classroom, I typically end up using Tempera Paint because it's washable. And everything that I'm going to say today will work with either one of those kinds of paints or even watercolors. The only thing to keep in mind is that if you're using oil paints, you won't want to clean it with water. Oil paints require paint thinner uh, or mineral spirits to clean instead. I'm going to start with my pencil, and what I want to do is draw a couple of three-dimensional forms. In order to keep things simple, I want to have forms with flat faces instead of curves, so no cylinders or cones. Instead, I'm going to do a cube on one side and a pyramid on the other. In case you don't know how to draw a cube, I start with a square, and resting on top of that square, I draw a parallelogram or a rhombus. So that's the front face of the cube and the top of the cube, and then you'll see a side on over here underneath where this parallelogram hangs over the original square. Let's make another parallelogram here, touching the side of the square and the bottom of that top parallelogram. And that creates the side face of the cube. Moving over, I'm going to draw a pyramid. To do that, I'm going to start with an upside down V shape. It's like a capital A without the line across it, or like a triangle without the bottom. Now, if I wanted a cone, I would make a curved line across the bottom, but I don't want that because, like I said before, I want to have nice flat faces on this pyramid. A curved surface is done a little bit differently than what we're doing today. To make the base of that pyramid, I want a much shorter V-shape, not as tall as this one. And I don't want it to be centered right in the same spot as that one. I want it to be offset. Uh, so here we go. So it looks kind of like a squished and a bajankety diamond. Then from the bottom corner to the top corner, make another straight line. And there, we've got a cube and a pyramid. There's one last thing we need to do before we can paint these objects. In order to paint these solid objects, we need to understand where the light's shining. If the light is shining from the right side, it will look totally different than it will if the light's shining from the left. Or if the light's shining from the top, or from the bottom, or from behind that will completely change the way that these objects look. Just to keep things easy, and because everybody does it, which really bugs me, as a matter of fact, I really don't like it, but that's a story for another day. Uh, we're gonna put the sun up in the top right corner. We're just gonna draw the sun. And let that sun shine be the source of light that illuminates these forms. And it dawned on me that this sun is probably really hard to see on the camera. So I'm going to make a little bit of magic happen. So I'm just going to paint it yellow and 
then go back in time and overlay this yellow sun on top of the whole rest of the video. Now, in order to paint this object, or any object, what we first have to do is figure out which way the light is shining. And I've just put my pencil down here in a straight line from the center of the sun to the cube. And you notice that that light is pointing from the sun at this side of the cube. That's important because it means this side will be the brightest. And if I go to my color wheel here where I've got a value scale, uh, what it means is these lighter values, these bright pinks, are what I might use for this face of the cube. So to make that face of the cube brighter, I'm going to make a tint using white and red. I want this to look like a red cube, so I'm going to use red to make it. But I'm going to add a little bit of white to that side because it's where the light is shining. To do that, I'll start by just putting a little bit of red down. And then I'm going to mix my white directly on the canvas. It's important to note that I could have mixed my paints up on the palette instead of on the paper or canvas. If you're in a situation where you know you're going to need these colors for other things, it's best to keep them nice clean colors up here on your palette and then mix them on the painting itself. There, so that face of the cube is nice and bright. The top, however, Let's get our little handy dandy pointer out again. You notice that the top is going to be lit by the sun, but not as directly. It's going to kind of bounce off to the side. And so that's the side that's going to be our mid-tone. It's going to be nice and red. It's going to be the color of the actual object, red. But I don't want to mix any white with it, so I need to get this pink out of my brush. To clean a brush, I'm just going to tap it gently on the bottom of my cup of water. I don't need to stir the water. I just tap gently. Wipe off the excess water on the cup. And because I'm not using watercolor paints, I don't want to have a wet brush. I'm using acrylics, or if you're using tempers, you want a dry brush. So I'm going to dry it off on my paper towel. And now that I've gotten all of the white out of my brush, I'm just going to grab some red. I should be saying primary magenta. The color that I'm using here is actually not red. It's called primary magenta. And now for the last face of the cube, we know that it is going to be getting the least amount of sun. If the sun is shining on the top and the right hand side, this side is going to be the darkest. Now, to make it really dark, I'm going to want to use quite a bit of red and just a tiny touch of black. My brush still has some red in it, but I'm not worried about contaminating the black. So, uh, I'm just, I'm not even going to bother cleaning it here. What I'm going to do is pick up some of that red, and I need more. And put a healthy amount of red down, as, about as much red as I think it will take to fill that whole square. 
And then I am just barely going to touch the corner of my brush into that black and mix it together here on the canvas. Again, I could have mixed it up here on the palette, but it'd be a waste of paint, really. And just take a look at how much darker that made the paint. Just that little bit of black made this red a whole lot darker. And there. Now, using a tint a mid-tone and a shade, all of one color, helps to create the illusion that that is a three-dimensional object. But there's one last thing we really need to do, and that's make a cast shadow. So let's pretend that this cube is on a flat surface, and that the sun would be shining, the sun would be creating a shadow over here. How do we know where to put the shadow? Again, we go away from the sun. So the way that this pencil is pointing is the way the shadow is going to go. So I'm going to air draw here from the sun to the corner and then put the pencil down and keep going in the same direction. I want to do the same thing um, from the opposite corner, but the corner in the back of the cube here is going to be casting a shadow. So from the sun through that back corner and out the side, you notice how that is not from the bottom corner, but it's from the back corner, which would be about here. And so it overlaps there a little bit. Now again, just like before, I'm not worried about contaminating my black. If I get a little bit of this dark red into that black, it's not going to make a difference at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick up some direct black. And I'm going to leave the red on my brush because Shadows will often reflect a little bit of the color of the object that casts the shadows. So if I have a little bit of red in my brush when I paint the shadow, it's not going to be a bad thing. Notice where I have started putting this black, this jet black, this really, really dark black right around the corner, along the bottom edge, and around the corner of that cube. As I work my way away from the cube itself, that shadow is going to get lighter and lighter. So, I've got the base black down. I'm going to get a little bit of white on my brush and start mixing it as I come away from the object. Now, I may have too much red in my brush, and that shadow is going to end up being quite a bit redder than I originally intended, but, you know, I'm just going to roll with it. And I've gone back and gotten just a touch of black again because I overdid the white here, and I want it to blend out to, to a gray. Please pardon that noise in the background. That's my son patiently waiting for me to turn Netflix back on. Notice the difference between this grayish red here and the bright pinkish color up there. Here I have black and red in my brush and I mixed it with white and it turned into this grayish red. Up there is a really bright pink, and that helps to make this look more like a shadow because it's more gray. Now there's one last thing I'm going to do for that shadow. Shadows are kind of fuzzy, so I want to dry my brush, get the extra paint out of the brush, but not necessarily clean it. And then just kind of, oh, I still had too much paint in my brush. And then I just kind of want to fuzz the edges a little bit. Fuzz the edges of my shadow a little bit. So they're not such straight lines. That will help give the illusion that it's actually a shadow being cast on a surface.
because in real life, shadows aren't like a straight, solid line. They're kind of fuzzy. And I may have fuzzed it out too much, but you know what? This is a practice, so I'm not concerned. Now, I'm ready to start moving over to this one, but I want nice, good, solid, clean colors like that bright pink there. And I can't do that with the gray that's in my brush, so I really need to clean my brush. Wipe the extra water off. Dry on a paper towel. And now I'm ready to get started here. I'm going to do it exactly the same way. I'm going to start by looking at which way the light is shining. So this right hand side is going to be a really bright value. How did I do that before? I mixed a little bit of red with a little bit of white directly onto my canvas. And this side is going to be the dark side. This, because of the way one side is, because of the way one side is getting hit by the light and the other side is not getting touched by the light at all, this object will not have a real red side like the cube did. It's going to have a bright side and a dark side. Again, I don't want the white that's in my brush to mix with the black and turn it into a grayish mess like that. So I'm going to clean my brush, and I'm going to dry my brush, and I want to mix up a dark color for this face of the pyramid. To do that again, I'm putting down as much red as I think it's going to take to fill that section, and then getting a little bit of black on my brush, mixing it together on the canvas. I might have grabbed a little bit too much black. It might be a little darker than I wanted, but it'll still work. Now the shadow on the pyramid is going to work in a very similar way as it did here, with one real big exception. On the cube, the shadow gets wider as it comes away from the cube. But because the pyramid is pointy on top, we should make the shadow pointy as well. What we can do is kind of find the midpoint of the base of the pyramid, which would be around here. We can make a line go th from the sun through the midpoint of the base and out this way. And that's the direction that it should get smaller. That point should be right here about where my fingertip is. In that area, we're going to make the shadow the same way we made this one. So my brush still has a little bit of that red, dark red in there. I'm going to pick up a little bit of pure black and put some pure black right at the baseline here, right at the base of that structure, and then start mixing white into it a little bit at a time until the tip of that shadow is a lot lighter than the back end. You know, Clean a little bit of that off and get this a little bit darker at the base. I didn't have anywhere near as much red in my brush this time as I did last time. Now, what I want to do before I call this done is make sure that I get the excess paint off of the brush. without really washing it. So there's still just a little bit of paint on there. And kind of fuzz the edges a little bit. And there you have it. Clean my brush really good before that little bit of paint dries in there. If you want to learn more, stick around for next week's video. I release every Thursday these beginner art tip videos. And next week, I'll be talking about what we call transition colors, which is where we use the color of the light source, like yellow, to make our highlights even more bright. And we use cooler colors to make our shadows even darker.
And that's something that I hinted at in the video where I made this color wheel. And also on Sundays, I make Zentangle videos. My last two videos were all about circles. And this Sunday, I'm going to be showing, uh, kind of like this, 12 different patterns. But they're all going to be made with squares instead of circles. As always, thanks for learning with me today. I hope I was able to inspire you. And don't forget that you don't have to be the best to do your best.